Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we will talk about the city of Hawler, internationally known as the city of Erbil. This is our fourth Kurdish city video. Now if you have missed our previous videos about Kurdish cities, you will find a link to them on top of the screen right now, so be sure to check that out. As usual, don't forget to like this video, comment your opinion down below and subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, make sure you follow us there to catch up with Kurdish facts, beautiful pictures and news about this channel. One last thing before we start with the video. If you are from Hawler, make sure you comment on this video. Let's see how many Hawleri we have on this channel. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. The city of Erbil, by Kurds often called Hawler, is an ancient city, probably the oldest city today, which still is populated. With its 1.2 million inhabitants, the city marks a both strategic and economically important center in Kurdistan alongside being the capital of the local KRG government, Kurdistan Regional Government. The city's official name, Erbil, probably comes from Erbilum, which was what the Sumerians called the city about 3000 BC. During this time, the city was a center for many ancient Mesopotamian gods, not at least Inanna, the god of lust, war, justice and political power. The Kurdish name for the city, Hawler, appears to be a corruption of the name Erbil by a series of metathesis of consonants leading to a change of the name during a long period of time. The city of Hawler is located in southern Kurdistan, which at the moment is occupied by Iraq. Except the 1.2 million inhabitants, the Erbil governorate has a population of at least 2.3 million people. Settlements in Hawler inhabited by people can be dated back to 5th millennium BC, making the city one of the oldest still inhabited areas in the world. The heart of the city contains of the ancient citadel of Erbil, which according to most sources was the main centrum of the city in ancient times. The first discoveries of the city comes from the archives in the city of Ebla in modern Syria. The records mentions two journeys by a messenger from Ebla to the city of Irbilum around 2300 BC. The city was back then in control of the Akkadian Empire, but would in time around 2150 BC fall into the control of the Gutian people, one of the Kurdish ancestors. In time, the city would fall into Assyrian control within three different eras, the Old Assyrian Empire, the Middle Assyrian Empire and the New Assyrian Empire. The Median king Sayasheris, which was the most successful ruler of the pre-Kurdish Median Empire, would eventually conquer Nineveh with the help of an ancient Iranian tribe called the Sagartians. After the gaining of new lands, Sayasheris would reward this ancient tribe by offering them settlements within modern Hawler and Kirkuk. Many years later, the very famous Battle of Guagamela took place in the outskirts of Hawler, marking a very strategic and symbolic battle between the armies of Alexander the Great and King Darius III of Persia. Hawler would eventually become part of Alexander's empire and after the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC, the city fell into the hands of the Seljucid Empire, following a number of other rules before the Iranian Sassanid Empire would rule the area and the city until 651 AD. The main religion in Hawler during this time was Zoroastrianism and Christianity. However, soon the Arabs came from the south with a whole new religion with themselves called Islam. As Islam within time became the dominant religion in the area, different people calling themselves Muslims also got benefits in the society before others. The Kurdish Sunni Muslim tribe of Heshbani had several governors placed within the city of Hawler between 10th century and the 12th century. In the year of 1237, Hawler was attacked by the Mongols. In this attack, the Mongols successfully plundered the lower town of Hawler. However, they were soon forced to retreat as the ruling caliphate reinforced the area with a much larger army. The Mongols would however get back as they in 1258 captured Baghdad and defeated the local Begtegnid rulers, whose ruler claimed that the Kurdish garrison would follow their surrender. 
The Kurds, however, refused, something that would lead to a six-month-long siege of Hawler by the Mongols. The ruling Hulagu clan of the Mongols then appointed an Assyrian Christian governor of Hawler, and the Orthodox Syriacs of Hawler were allowed to build a church in the city. However, the good relations between the Mongols and the Christians in Hawler would turn around as the Mongolian Ilkhanids started persecutions against both Christians, Jews and Buddhists under the rule of Mongolian Emir Nowruz. Kurdish tribesmen reportedly participated in the Mongolian massacres of the Assyrian people in the 1st of July 1310. Whether it was a minor or a major participation is further unknown. Eventually, the city would come under the hands of the Ottoman Turks and for 400 years be part of the Mosul Vilayet until the Kurdish and Ottomans were defeated in World War I. The city of Hawler stands on a very important location, right on the route between Baghdad and Mosul. This made Hawler an important trading center during the Middle Ages, which would be vital for the city's future expansions into a greater city than it is today. Today, the Kurds are a majority of the total population of Hawler, followed up by Arabs, Assyrians, Turkomans, Armenians and smaller groups of Iranians and Mandinians. Even though Hawler was implemented into a future Kurdish self-ruling after negotiations between Mustafa Barzani and Saddam Hussein, the city was under the dictator's grip until the Kurdish Raparin revolution in 1991. We will leave a link on top of the screen for our documentary about the Raparin revolution right now, so be sure to check that out. In the 90s, Hawler became one of the centers in the three-year-long Kurdish civil war between the two main parties of PUK and KD. The city of Hawler was captured by the KDP under Iraqi assistance in 1996. To answer on this action, the PUK created an alternative Kurdish government in the city of Sleimani. The civil war would cost at least 6,000 deaths of both sides and eventually the war ended as the both sides met and signed a peace treaty between themselves, dealing on the future power of Iraqi-occupied Kurdistan. Hawler later became one of the iconic cities for the resistance against the Iraqi Ba'ath regime as America invaded Iraq in 2003. The city was targeted several times after the fall of the Ba'ath regime allegedly by the Islamic terror organization Ansar al-Sunna, which killed 109 people during the 2004 Hawler bombings and another 60 people in the suicide bombings 4th of May 2005. The same year, 2005, the international airport of Erbil was opened. Since then, the world has looked at Iraq as a country of war. However, while middle and southern Iraq has been preoccupied by handling its differences, mostly by conflicts, the Iraqi-occupied Kurdistan has been under constant development in a rebuilding process of an independent country. But the development of KRG, the regional government of Kurdistan, has also faced criticism among the own Kurdish people, not at least for corruption. Now, if you want a video about this, make sure you like this video and show us that you really want us to do this video and we will of course make one about the KRG status. The big investments on KRG development created a whole new world of business and foreign people coming to the city of Hawler. This also made the city a key point in the war against ISIS as one of the main reasons America went into war was that ISIS were closing in on the city, something that endangered a lot of foreign citizens, not the least American ones. This was alongside the situation with James Foley and the execution of other American citizens the main reasons for America joining in in the battle against ISIS. Further on, we plan a very separate video about the citadel of Hawler, where we want to go more deeply into the architect and history of the citadel itself. Shortly, the citadel is one of KRG's most visited tourist attractions with a history that dates back to the beginning of Hawler city. South of the citadel we have the famous Kaisari Bazaar, which is from the 13th century AD. In this bazaar you can buy everything from honey, yogurt and cheese, to rugs, paintings and televisions. Today, the citadel has been inscribed in the World Heritage List and this was made in 21th of June 2014. 
The city of Holir has throughout time been under different people, different rules, different kingdoms and different dynasties. Looking from the beginning to today, it has been under Kurdish influence for most of the years and it is likely that this will be the case for the future of the city. Now that's it for this video, if you like it give it a thumbs up, make sure you comment your opinion down below, let us know which city or village of Kurdistan that you want us to talk about in the next video of this series and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we will see you next time.